This is the Fuji GW6903 medium format film camera. So who cares, right? I mean, everybody's shooting digital these days. So, you know, what, what's it to anybody that somebody has a film camera? I mean, psh, you know, film is dead, right? I don't know. Um, I still have fun shooting film. Um, I, I very much feel that, you know, cr the creation of art is not just that end result and getting some hearts on Instagram or what have you, but it's really like the process. And, you know, some people really enjoy the process of shooting film versus the process of shooting digitally. It's kind of two different mediums, really. And while, you know, photography is photography, uh, shooting film is a bit different of a beast. And then you got to deal with developing it and then scanning it. And, you know, probably all the steps that make people cringe and say, oh, I, would, I don't want to ever go back to that. Absolutely. Production environment, photography, commercial photography, scenarios where you have to shoot tons and tons of shots. Hands down, digital is the way to go. But having fun, running around and just like taking pictures of stuff and kind of getting back to like that sense of mystery that might have gotten you interested in photography in the first place. Nothing wrong with a good old film camera. However, this puppy, also known as the Texas Leica, is not a small camera. However, one cool aspect of it, among many, is that it's pretty light. It's lighter weight than my Canon DSLR, and I can you know, throw it over my shoulder or sling it across me and go on a hike, and I don't feel like I'm carrying some super clunky, heavy camera with a big lens or anything like that. You know, like any camera system that I've run into in my career, they all have their pros and cons. Uh, there isn't just one that works for everything perfectly. You know, I might use a view camera style technical camera on one shot versus a medium format on another versus DSLR might be the way to go for a different type of shoot and maybe even applications for mirrorless cameras. Kind of like in the video world, it's like until you get to the like $20,000 plus video camera, there's something missing on it that you might want and then you realize, oh, it's that next model up that has that thing that I need. But the beauty of this camera and some other film cameras like it is its bare bones nature. I mean, what are we talking about here? We're talking about really three variables. We're talking about the ISO speed of the film that you put in this camera, okay? And then we're talking about right here on the lens barrel, got the shutter speeds, okay? And the apertures going in half stops. So not a tremendous amount of like, you know, hyper control over things. You know, we're not going into like third stop increments like we have on a lot of digital cameras. We got half stops, full stops, and then shutter speeds are in full stops, and then whatever speed film that you're stuck to, which is probably the part that a lot of people who shoot digitally hate, is the fact that you can't change the ISO. You gotta put in a different film. But sometimes those limitations that we put ourselves under really kind of open us up to enjoying the process a little bit more. Uh, I know myself, I am very deliberate about how I shoot. Even when I'm shooting digitally, it's, I'm not super willy-nilly about it. I'm, I cal I'm calculated, I make drawings, I sketch things out, uh, and then I go in and I shoot generally what I saw in my mind's eye. That's just how I work. Not everybody works that way and that's okay. But I love the bare bones nature of this camera and the fact that it kind of forces you if to either bring a light meter with you. <gasps> light meter, what's that, right? Who uses those? Or in a lot of cases, I, if it's a certain lighting condition outside, I can make a guess. And in most cases, I can overexpose a little bit, you know, up to two thirds of a stop, a full stop at, at certain points onto the film, and it doesn't have a problem at all. The latitude of that film holds pretty well. This particular camera is outfitted with a Fujinon F3.5. This is a fixed 90 millimeter lens which is kind of more equivalent to like a 40 millimeter lens in the 35 millimeter world. So really it's pretty close to one of my favorite focal lengths, the 35 millimeter focal length. And uh, you know, 40 is pretty close to that. I'm, I'm okay with that. One of the other really cool aspects about this camera and why I like shooting with it is as I've gotten older, I've had to get glasses. And 
one of the things that can be difficult for somebody now who is going through this part of their life where they have to wear glasses um, is that you're dealing more with diopters and you're dealing more, you know, adjusting your diopter on the digital camera to get the focus right. So critical focus starts to become this thing of just like, okay, let me check, let me double check, zoom in on the image, or if I'm tethered, I'll zoom in and, you know, checking my critical focus. This is a rangefinder camera. And so you'll notice there's no option for diopter on the back. That's just not even a thing through the eyepiece. Instead, as you focus the camera, there's a double image that appears right in the center and you are looking to find along the plane of focus of the area that you want sharp in the shot, you're looking to find that double image and then match them up. And because of that, it makes it really easy for me to see that without using my glasses. And I can look right through the camera and I can see that double image and I can still get sharp shots. Is it the fastest camera? No. Is it the smallest camera? No. Is it the most automated fancy camera? No. Its beauty is in its simplicity as well as in the sheer size of the negative that it produces. This particular camera is, produces a six by nine size negative. And because of that, it can create these enormous poster size shots. When I take a picture with one of these and I scan it, I mean, at that point I'm, you know, I could blow that thing up really big and it would be beautiful. I can also put remotes for flash units on the top of this camera on the hot shoe and sync it to strobes. And at that point, you kind of need to know what you're doing, right? Because um, you're dealing with film, you're not dealing with digital, and it's like it's going onto the film and you don't have the ability to check anymore on the computer screen or on the back of the camera when you're hooked up to strobes, right? It's, um, so at that point, light meters do become important um, and, and knowing how to use a flash meter in those scenarios. So let's load this thing up. Let's see. See, I got a roll of some Portra 160. So, uh, you know, if we go to pull a roll of film out of here, it's gonna come out of this side. We're taking the film from this side to this side. So when we pull a roll of film out, it leaves this little spindle here. So I'm gonna hit this little red button and I'm gonna place it over on the other side. Kind of spin it around to get it in to play and then go ahead and load this film in and I kind of spin it until I I'm able to click the button down and I'm gonna pull this little tab and I'm gonna pull this adhesive thing off. And there's quite a bit of paper leader here so I'm not too worried about doing this in the light. And then I'm gonna go ahead and wind it. And you'll see there's, it's a little hard to tell but there's like a little notch right here and right in there. What I want to do is I want to line this double arrow up to that notch right there. So that'll give me a good start. I go ahead and close the camera down, locking it down, and then I wind it. It's a good idea. I like to lock the camera so it's got on the front here, this is a shutter release so that when you're shooting in portrait orientation, you can use the shutter release right here. Or if I'm in landscape orientation, I can use the shutter release here, which is threaded in case I want to thread in a cable release and not touch the camera while I'm actually doing the exposure. So I'm gonna wind that film through. At 120, shoots eight exposures on this roll of film. So on a roll of 120 film, I'm getting eight shots. And I don't know about you, but the last time I shot a roll of 35 millimeter film with 36 exposures on it, it took me like four months to fill that thing up. I just wasn't shooting enough and, and it took forever for me to shoot all the shots that were on that 36 exposure roll. In some ways I kind of like, I, I pine for the days of the 12 exposure 35 millimeter roll where I could just like shoot the thing, process it, get my shots and not be waiting around. And um, sometimes I'm just not shooting a tremendous amount of shots. And so then I'm kind of like, you know, it's taking forever. Anyhow, this thing, eight shots, which I guess you could say, boy, that doesn't seem like a lot. But the other side, we're talking about negatives that are huge. I mean, look at these things. Look at these negatives. You know, they're, they're, the next step up from here would be a four by five camera, which is a lot less transportable than a six, nine camera. 
Granted, you still can, and 4x5 gives you other options, such as, you know, interchangeable lenses and things like that, but that's a whole different process. There isn't a whole lot of, like, action being shot with those, and um, it's definitely a different to-do to shoot with a 4x5 camera than it is with a 6 9 camera. I've also shot with the Fuji GX680 camera, also known as the Fujizilla camera. It's a beast of a thing. And really, honestly, I've, I've done some handheld work with it. I don't really like hand-holding that thing. Um, it's better to like have it on a monopod or on a tripod. It's really more of a studio camera, I think. But this fella, if, you're, if you wanna shoot some landscapes, some portraits, just kind of street photography around town, you're gonna get a really big negative out of the deal and you're gonna be able to blow that thing up really big and it's actually pretty darn sharp. I've shot Portrait 800, did a portrait of my friend Mike and I thought it turned out beautifully, nice and backlit in the winter time. I've done some shots uh, seaside with this. I take it on hikes around town. I really just have, uh, you know, nothing but good things to say about it. Where do you get this camera? Well, unfortunately, they don't make it anymore. So you have to get it on eBay. And at one time they were like pretty dirt cheap. The prices kind of went through the roof because other people had discovered this camera. And um, so, you know, you can expect at the time of this filming probably to pay about $900 for a camera like this. But when you shoot 35 millimeter and then you jump and you shoot the big negatives, and you scan one versus the other and you zoom in 100%, you'll then see the difference between shooting medium format versus small format. So that's it. As far as gear reviews, I love this kind of gear review because I'm not a huge gear review guy and you know other people are super good at that and they get all super technical and they get all down into the weeds of like the technicalities of things and then people love to comment and all that. I guess it's just not my thing. I love this because there isn't much to say. I mean, ISO, shutter speed, aperture, rangefinder focus, viewfinder, hot shoe, you can shoot eight exposures on it, load and unload the film, you're good to go. And then when you're done with the film, it'll roll through till it feels loose. You'll be able to feel the tension releases and that'll be time for you to open up the back. So you're gonna activate it by pulling open this little lever here again, open it up, like so. And on the bottom here, there's this little button, kind of like you saw on this side here for loading film. And again, you just press it and it releases this little button down here, releases the film essentially. And then you can pull that film out, like so. And then I'll usually take it and fold this lip over. Some of these you have to, uh, some of these you have to lick. It's kind of gross, but this one has some sticky on it, which is nice. Roll it nice and tight. And then I'll usually throw my film in like a, a dark bag of some kind. And my preferred bag is actually a Crown Royal bag, um, you know, like what the booze comes in. Um, but you could put it like in an old lens bag, that kind of thing. And in some cases, some film like this Lomo film that I have, when I go to roll it up, it's like really kind of loosey goose. And I don't really like that. So I immediately throw it into, you know, one of the bags that I use to pick up my dog's poops because it's a nice dark bag and I put it inside of there and then I put it inside of another dark bag. And that way, as I'm waiting to get, you know, like 12 to 20 rolls of film on deck for developing, I can do the developing all in one big batch as opposed to, you know, single rolls at a time. Um, so putting it in a dark bag just makes me feel better that it's not gonna get like light leaks or anything weird like that. So then once you've got your film out of the camera, you can either find a lab that can develop 120 film, or as I do, you can develop it at home and then scan it using your digital camera. And I use a Canon 5DSR, which then means that I'm gonna get 8,000 pixels on the long edge of a photograph of my big negative, which basically means with that particular scan, so to speak, I'm getting an 18 by 26 inch poster out of this, right out of the gates without any resing up. And then I use Adobe Photoshop to do the reversal process and kind of bring the photo to life. And it's really a, a process that I think others would say, no thanks, they love digital because it's so immediate. But for those of us who learned on film and then went into digital, it's kind of nice to revisit it 
part of the craft and some of that mystery that was, you know, maybe missing in, in your photographic life. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, slam that like down below. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to hear more from me. Um, you know, I, I do things that are like audio related, some things that are video related, and because I come from still photography, I touch upon some still photography as well. So it's sort of multimedia over here at Onset Education. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.